What's up, it's Marco, Sage's Soccer, and today I'll be doing my preview for World Cup Group G. And this is a really fun group. We have Brazil, quite possibly the favorites for this tournament. And it's going to be really fun to watch them, but it won't be easy for that team to advance. Serbia and Switzerland will both be giving Brazil a challenge, and the game between those two is going to be one of the best matches of the group stage. In addition, there's Cameroon, who, while likely not the biggest opposition for them, aren't going to roll over, and they've had some good AFCON runs in the past. Yeah, it's going to be a really fun group, and let's get into the previews. Starting off, we've got Brazil, and they look set to reclaim their spot as world champions. They were unbeaten in South American World Cup qualifying, which is just insane. You've got Neymar coming into the tournament in great form, and is possibly the best player in the world at the current moment. Then you have Gabriel Jesus, who's in the form of his life, giving them a great striker option that they've been missing for a while. And in addition, the rest of the attack and midfield is looking very good. Defense might be a slight issue, but even though that does come up, they've got a world-class keeper behind them. This is a Brazil side that will not be satisfied with anything except the trophy, and I think they have the ability to win it. Tactically, they look to be set up in a 4-2-3-1, playing Neymar as a 10, making him the star of the team, getting him on the ball as much as possible. Uh, something interesting about this Brazil side is they're lined up a little bit defensively. Um, I'd expect to see uh, them be a bit pragmatic against some of the top clubs, which might not get the most out of their talent, but hey, it's been working recently, and it's really been helping out their defense. Then individually with players, it's really fun to talk about these top teams because there's just so much talent to pick from, and there are players who probably could start that won't end up making the 26. There's just a lot of talent. I'm going to give my predictions for the squad, and let's get into it. In goal, there are two great options in Allison and Ederson. Um, Allison looks to have the edge, but both are world-class keepers with just great pedigree. Um, Ederson's got the edge with his feet. Allison might be a bit more well-grounded as a goalkeeper, though his feet aren't bad either. When Liverpool played Man City, Allison had a great pass for Liverpool. So it's not a weakness for them. Like, both two just insane goalkeepers, and whichever one they pick is going to be a great option. I think it's going to be Allison, and that's who it's likely to be. But, man, just two great options, and it's insane that they might have two of the top five goalkeepers in the world on their same squad. At center back, there are a few options for Brazil. Uh, Marquinhos is likely to be a starter. He's not in the best form with for PSG at the current moment, but he's too good of a talent to leave off. He's really started to fulfill that potential that we saw in him as a young player, and he's just coming to his own, and I think he's undroppable for this Brazil side. Just really good on the ball, like everything you need to be a great center back, and like, he's got to be a starter for them. Also, Edar Militao is another option. He's been a rock for Real Madrid at their defense. Helped them with a great Champions League run. Another just top-class center back who can do anything on the field. Though, that might be a bit of an issue that he can do everything. Because there's a good chance he ends up playing right back for this Brazil side. And Thiago Silva might be the other starter. At 38, he isn't in his prime anymore. He is starting to slow down, but... He's still a very good option for them, and we've seen other center backs like Pepe is going to be a starter for Portugal if he's healthy at, what, 39? So it's not unprecedented, but I don't think he's at his best. He's not the same Thiago Silva he was, and with Edmar Militao maybe moving out to right back, I think there's a bit of a weakness with one player out of position, having a 38-year-old on the field as well, but those are three players within Again, just a great pedigree, so I don't think you can doubt Fullback is definitely the weak point for this Brazil side, which is kind of weird for me, having grown up with uh, Marcelo and Danny Alves there and looking back at Roberto Carlos and Cafu, and that's not even mentioning guys like uh, Maicon in the team as well. But it is what it is for this Brazil team. Uh, I think their best option at left back is probably Alex Tejas, who really was not having a good run at uh, Manchester United, but he's been starting to get some time at Sevilla, and he might just be a good option for them. He's starting to get some time. He's been getting forward pretty well. He's done a decent job for Brazil, and while it's definitely not Marcelo, it's probably not the best left back in this group either. Honestly, might not might be third, arguably, but it's he's not going to be a liability, I don't think. Alexandro is another option, though he's coming back from an injury, and he really hasn't been at his best lately, and I'm not sure if you want him in the team. 
At right back, Danilo has actually been really solid defensively lately. He doesn't offer too much going forward, but with the attacking threat that uh, Brazil has, that's not the biggest deal. Though they'll likely have a right winger who's been going to be cutting inside, so you might want to have a better uh, option offensively on the right. But he has been doing good defensively, and that might be what Brazil needs. Uh, then you have Danny Alves. He's still in the fold. He's he's an all-time great, but he hit his peak a long time ago. And I don't know. I, I think that he probably would not even be considered if they had a decent option. But I think it'll be good if he's in the team. He's Does he yet still have the most trophies out of any player in history? I remember that stat, but... Um, like, if he's a winner, so having him in the squad might not be bad, but I don't think he should see the field. Moving into the midfield, and Casemiro is an amazing option. Uh, probably the best uh, defensive midfielder in the world at the moment. I honestly rate him really high. I think I have him above Busquets, even on an all-time scale. He's somebody who I really rate. Amazing for Real Madrid. I think he's going to be helping Manchester United a ton. Just great defensive option. Not bad going forward either, like... Just such a talented player. The fact that Fabinho is on the bench should say a lot because he's been such a good player for Liverpool as well. Like, so many good options in that team. And you might want to consider starting Fabinho alongside Casemiro, but there are some other options to talk about at uh, the more advanced, uh, I guess would be kind of like an 8 for that Brazil team. Uh, Fred, Manchester United's Fred, has been getting a lot of playing time for them. He's just kind of an unremarkable holding midfielder. I think he provides a bit of work rate, but that's kind of it. And honestly, I don't write Scott McTominay, but I think they're very similar players. And I, Fred might be a starter for this team, and if he is, that's going to hurt them. There's also been Bruno, who's been playing extremely well for Newcastle and is a much better box-to-box option. And uh, maybe you have a Lucas Paquita from West Ham come in as an option on the left, possibly in the midfield. I don't think he'll start, but he has been an option in like a like a 4-3-3. But uh, I'm, I don't think they'll be doing that in the World Cup. So it's likely to be Fred in the midfield alongside Casemiro, which, again, I just... I am not sure about that decision. Then we move to the attack, and this is just insane. Uh, Neymar, possibly the best player in the world at the 10, like... I think he's going to really take his game to another level at the World Cup with Brazil. We saw how seriously he took, like, the Olympics. Like, he's going to be giving it his all, and if he does that, like, I think Brazil could easily win this tournament. Uh, Then Vinicius cutting in on that uh, left-hand side, like, he's going to be dangerous. He's probably already a world-class player, helped Real Madrid win the Champions League, and just such a dangerous option, and he'll be terrorizing the defense this all uh, tournament. Then Rafinha will likely be on the right. A talented winger we can cut inside. Not the same amount of talent as like a Neymar or a Vinicius. Um, honestly, maybe not even like a Willian if Brazil teams of old, but still just good player who can help them out cutting in on that right-hand side. And then as backups, you've got Anthony from Manchester United, uh, Rodrigo from Real Madrid as well, who I'm not even sure if all of them end up making the team, but just such a talented group of players and then up front Gabriel Jesus is hitting the floor of his life under Arsenal like we've seen all the talent that he has but he's finally putting it all together under Mikel Arteta and I he's probably going to be scoring goals this World Cup and he might be that striker that Brazil have really been chasing since man since Adriano didn't pan out or not didn't pan out because he's a great player but didn't uh get his career going as long as it should have like because who they have like Fred in 2014, like, man, he could be that guy to really take this Brazil squad to the next level. And Roberto Firmino is not a bad option behind them. Like, this is a Brazil team, like, stacked with attacking talent. I didn't even mention all the really good players that they have, and, man, I think they know sky's the limit. If I had to predict their starting lineup, I'd say a 4-2-3-1 with Allison in goal, Mark Quinos and Thiago Silva at center back, uh, Militao on the right, Alex Tejas on the left, Casemiro and Thread as holding midfielders, uh, Vinicius, Neymar, and Rafinha in uh, the three of the 4-2-3-1, and Gabriel Jesus up top. And I'd probably do 
a very similar thing. I might have Danilo over Thiago Silva, which, Jesus, I did not think I'd ever be saying that in my life. And uh, maybe I'd move, yeah, moving Militao Central to be the other center back partnering Marquinhos, and I'd start Bruno over Fred. Uh, this is a Brazil team that looks set to take the tournament by storm. They have world-class players all over the field, and even though they aren't great at fullback, and if they start Fred as a weakness, there's all the talent there to win the tournament. And keep in mind, guys like Blaise Matuidi, uh, Howard as Kramer, they've all started for World Cup winning teams recently. I think that they will win this group. It's possible that they stumble. Uh, Switzerland's a very good defensive team. Uh, Serbia's got a lot of talent all over the field, and Maybe Cameroon's able to do something. Like, it's possible they stumble, but it's very unlikely in my opinion. And after that, they should beat any of the teams coming out of Group H. Uh, they have a quarterfinal game that's likely going to be against uh, Spain or Germany. And I think that'll be tough, but I think they have the advantage in that game. Then there's a semifinal game probably against Argentina that could really go either way. And it'll be definitely be a hard road to the final, but... And no team has, like, a higher than 50% chance to win this tournament. But they might just be my favorites, and I don't think they'll be satisfied with anything other than first place. Next, I'm going to be talking about Switzerland. And the Swiss are coming off a very solid Euro where they beat the world champions and only lost to Spain on penalties. And they recently avenged that loss in the Nations League win. This is a team that's made a habit out of making knockout rounds and flash potential to go even further. This team still has a good amount of players from the world's top teams, and... While they might not be favorites in this group, I think that they can challenge and even best a lot of the top teams in the world. And I think they have some potential to do some real damage. Tactically, Switzerland will be playing on the defensive side, especially against top teams. They are extremely tough to break down. France and Spain saw that firsthand. And they have talent to score on the counter. They should line up in a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1. And there are a lot of good players on this team to go over individually. In goal, Jan Sommer is a top-class goalkeeper, probably top 10 at the World Cup. Does everything you need as a keeper, and is a big part of the reason why the Swiss can keep these games so close. He did roll his ankle pretty recently, though. It looks like he'll be available, but even if he isn't, they've got a very good backup in uh, Borussia Dortmund's keeper, uh, Gregor Koppel, who's a bit younger and is still erratic, but on his day is just as good. At center back, there are a couple of options. Uh, one is going to be Akinji. He's an obvious pick. He's looked great since signing for Man City. Uh, extremely technical. Even when he's been uh, shifted out to right back, he's looked good. On top of that, great athlete and can read the game very well as well. Partnering him will be either Newcastle's Fabian Scher or Borussia Luchin Gladbach, uh, Nico Alvedi. Um, Alvedi's a very well grounded center back, not at Akinji's level, but good on the ball. Decent athlete, and uh, Cher, I think, is a bit better defensively and also very good on the ball, but isn't as quick. Though I don't think that's necessary with um, how Switzerland plays. They're going to be sitting back defensively, and I think Shard would be my personal option, but I don't think you could go wrong. At fullback, it's still Ricardo Rodriguez on the left, and while he's not the player he used to be, injuries took a toll on his athleticism. He still defends and gets forward very well and is a good option for the Swiss team. On the right, you're likely to have uh, Sylvain Widmer, who's just a really hard-working right back who can palm up and down the field. Uh, Fulham's uh, Embadu is another good option, but I'm expecting to see Widmer, and it's a not a great group of uh, fullbacks. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez probably had a lot of, um, was very good in the past, but as I mentioned before, injuries took its toll, but this is a team that plays pretty defensively, and it gets the best out of their talent. While we can't be sure how their midfield will line up exactly, I think the midfield three will be Granite Jacker, uh, Froler, and Sal. Uh, Froler has been very solid at Nottingham Forest. He's a good defensive midfielder, a strong defensive ability, and does a lot of little things right in possession. This isn't a world-class midfield, but it's a pretty solid one that gets the job done in their defensive system. Then Sal is a good box-to-box -box midfielder, though he might be their main creative threat and might be a bit more of a 10 in this uh, Swiss team. Then Granit Xhaka is there. He's been playing in great form for Arsenal recently, scoring some goals as well. And he's really been showing off his skill, and with the defensive options around him, uh, it can really allow him to be at his best. Uh, though Chelsea man uh, uh, Zikaria will likely be coming off the bench, despite having a lot of talent, though he's kind of used to that at this point. <laughs> the attack for Switzerland is also likely set with Shakiri, Vargas, and Mbolo. Uh, Shakiri will come into this World Cup... Uh, well-rested, I guess, is the positive you can take from his time in Chicago. But I think he still has some talent in him, though he's not the player that he used to be. 
Uh, Ruben Vargas is a dynamic winger, though he doesn't have the end product that you want, but he is still a good option playing at Augsburg. Uh, Mbolo is up front, and while he probably hasn't fulfilled his potential, he's still just a physical beast that will always be a threat to uh, opposing defenses, and he's shown the ability to score. Uh, Harris Seferovic is a target man who would step in. Uh, maybe you push Mbolo out onto the left. Vargas hasn't been at his best lately. And uh, Noah Okafor of RB Salzburg is another good player to watch. Switzerland has been putting together some solid runs the last few tournaments, and there's reasons to believe it will continue. Their defense has been looking very solid, and their attack has been dangerous on the counter. Though their defensive style might limit them, and their lack of star power is another uh, thing to keep in mind. Because while I think they will give Brazil a very good matchup, and I think their style of play will counter Serbia very well, that game against Cameroon might be tough, and they might find themselves struggling to score. I could see them getting tripped up in the group stage very easily, and Serbia is going to be challenging them hard, but with how well they've been doing at previous tournaments, there's reason to believe that they will advance to the knockout round. And once they get there, I predict they will be going up against Portugal in the round of 16, and they've beaten them recently, and that's, that's a game that they know they can win, and... Once they get to the knockout round, their solid defense will be able to keep get them far. We saw them get to penalties against France and Spain, and they'll need a lot of luck, but if they get that luck, there's reasons to be optimistic. Next, we have Serbia, one of the most fun teams at this World Cup. In addition to an attacking style of play, they have actual star power on the field with Sergej Milinkovic Savic and Dusan Vlachovic. Uh, the team has some good talent all over the field, and as I mentioned before, they don't play defensively. Against Portugal in their must-win game to advance to the World Cup, they won all, They were on the front foot, and I expect them to do that against basically every team in this tournament, including Brazil. Uh, this is a team whose defense isn't the best, but has been helped out by the formation and has some lethal strikers. Uh, despite that, history's not really on their side. In their last World Cup, they failed to advance from a group with Switzerland and Brazil, another team whose name starts with the C, and they failed to qualify for the Euros. Because of that, I have Switzerland as my slight favorites ahead of him, but man, this is a Serbia team that looks very good, and they've got a great chance to advance as well. Serbia plays a 3-5-2, which gets the most out of their attacking talent while covering up for their players' defensive deficiencies. Uh, it should be said that their wingers are closer to wingbacks, kind of similar to how Belgium will play. And it's mostly offensive players that get moved back, like a uh, Juventus' Kostic, who really excels in this position. If they fought against Portugal, they were able to press very well, and I'd expect them to do that again. This is a team that can build out of the back, but with Mitrovic up front, they can also just boot it forward. I expect them to really be like the protagonist of the game, so they will be taking it to the other opponents but that could leave them open on their counter. Individually, the players on this team are mostly set, in my opinion. I could see one or two changes, maybe, but most of the team is together, except for their defense, which I really have no idea how it's going to go, uh, especially in goalkeeper. Uh, their most capped goalkeeper is uh, Prijad uh, Rajakovic, who helped Serbia win the U-20 World Cup in 2015. He's got amazing reactions, and I think potential to be a real top goalkeeper, but he has a lot of mistakes in him, which led to him getting dropped last window. Then you have, like, a Marko Dimitrovic, who is a lot calmer of a goalkeeper, but isn't a starter at Sevilla, so I really don't see him as a great option as well. Then you've got Serge's brother, Avenja Milinkovic Savic, who is a massive six foot eight player and the starter for Torino. He's become a very good goalkeeper as of late and might be the favorite for the start. Uh, his height's obviously a huge boost for him. He's got very good reaction time as well, and he's actually pretty good with his feet. You might remember him taking a free kick in the game that hit the post. Like, he's a very fun goalkeeper to watch, and it's, he's my guess to play. I could see Rajkovic playing as well, though. It's tough to predict. I think I'd have to go with uh, Milinkovic Savic for this one, though. Defense is slightly easier to predict. We have one of the three set, and that's uh, Nikola Milinkovic. Uh, Serbia's best center back. He's from Fiorentina, and he's good on the ball, all right defensively, though his speed is a bit of an issue. It's in a system that covers for the lack of speed, but it's a problem for Serbia throughout their entire center back group, and honestly, a good part of their team that uh, speed just isn't there, and I can see this team really struggling with an Embolo up top. And I should say that, unlike the 
Serbia of Nemanja Vidic's days, this defense is pretty weak, and it's more tough to predict out of nobody making the spot their own rather than uh, just being, like, two good options. I think uh, Stefan Mitrovic, uh, the center back one, uh, he's a good center back with uh, aerial ability, but a, a string, like an extreme lack of speed that might cost him. And you've got uh, Pelovic, who's a good prospect at RB Salzburg, uh, Babbitt, Babich, who's a pretty good defender. He's been playing a La Liga. Uh, then you have uh, Velkovic, who's been good for uh, Werder Bremen. Uh, Nastacic, the former Man City op- uh, wonder kid, is an option as well, though probably unlikely. And I think they're all kind of similar players where, you know, you can... It's not like the goalkeepers where there is a real difference. Like, I don't think it really matters who starts. I think the defense is going to be pretty suspect anyway. But it's definitely a weak point of the team that the Serbia coach will have to cover for. At wing back, or maybe winger back, we can expect to see Juventus' Filip Kostic and Andrea Zivkovic. Uh, Kostic hasn't got off to the best start at Juventus, but I think that's more down to the current system that he's in, not getting the best out of him. We saw how good he was at Frankfurt. Elite level wing back who excels in this system, and if Juventus fans are saying, well, he's a system player, well... He's in a good system for him. It's a good thing he's playing for Serbia right now. Uh, He has everything you need in a good wing back. The athleticism, attacking play, and enough defensive ability for that wing back spot. And I think he's going to be a great player for Serbia. He can really get some good crosses in, and that will really help feed uh, Mitrovic up top. And it's going to be really fun to watch him. Uh, Then you've got uh, Zivkovic, who's typically more of a winger. He actually is a, a winger who typically cuts inside onto his left foot. But he's done all right in this system. He hasn't looked uh, terrible defensively, and it's clearly not natural when he's going up against a Vinicius. I think it's going to become an issue. But he's been doing pretty well in this spot, and I don't expect him to be a liability, at least not at the group stage. The last position that I'm really unsure about is the midfield partner of Milinkovic Savic. It could be either Nemanja Gudel or Sasa Lukic. Lukic has looked very good in the role recently, and I think his style of play, its all-around game, really helps out Serge, though Goodell is probably the option they're going to go with, though he's actually been more of a center back with Sevilla lately, and I think it would really help the defense if he played there, but it hasn't been tried yet, and I don't think you can just assume they'll start doing it now. Uh, Goodell is probably the better option who will end up starting, but honestly, either is pretty good. I think Goodell is just has a little bit more, but I think Lukic could do that role fine as well. It's honestly flipping a coin. And I should mention Ivan Illich is another very promising talent to consider as well in that spot. After that, the team is pretty easy to predict. Milinkovic Savic will be in the midfield. He can play as a deep-playing playmaker, allowing him to drop deep and help in the build-up and be creative. Like, he's such a special player that can do so much on the field. I think he'll do this role for Serbia, just helping in that build-up play with a defense that can struggle in it and pick out some really good passes, feed it ahead to those those top attacking players. This role will really help out Serbia. He's just a special player who might be in line for a huge move after this World Cup. Ahead of him, as a 10, will be Tadic, uh, just a really good player. He's not in the best form for Ajax right now, but he's got some moments of magic in him. He can provide the creativity that his team will need and goals as well. I think he's somebody who needs to be in the squad. And up top will be Valhalvich and Mitrovic. Uh, Mitrovic more of a target man, and Valhalvich will actually be allowed to be a bit more creative and drop deeper. It can be a dangerous partnership that can trouble any defense in the world. Like, two players who are looking very good. Mitrovic is in amazing form in the Premier League. Uh, Valhalvich, like, looks amazing for Juventus as well. Probably going to be a world-class player in the near future. Like, really good strikers. Like, And Luka Jovic is available off the bench, who... Like, he didn't do well at Real Madrid, but they signed him. And, man, another really attacking, talented attacking player. And this Serbia team looks good. This is a Serbia team that is extremely talented and has a manager who will get the best out of them. I think the big match of this group is going to be their game against Switzerland. And, man, not even for, like, the strictly on-the-field reasons. We know how big that game is off the field as well with players like Shakiri, But I think that... The way the two teams play, the advantages to Switzerland, getting something on the counter. They have a very good goalkeeper, and I trust Switzerland's experience at this point. 
but it's really close. I think Serbia might have the more talented team. And if they do get out of the group, they've gotten the better of Portugal before. And I think they do have a very high ceiling at this World Cup. Though their defense is probably too weak for them to be real contenders. And I could see them getting tripped up by uh, Switzerland. It'll be tough to stop Brazil. And if Cameroon have a really solid defense, they've got some good attacking players as well. So I don't think they get out of the group. But man, they'll be fun to watch. And it's going to be really, really good to see a lot of their talent on display. Lastly, we have Cameroon. I think they're the bottom team in this group, and I struggle to see them getting through. It was a very tough draw, in my opinion. Uh, Brazil, obviously, and then Serbia and Switzerland are looking very good as well. Both of them should probably make the knockout stage, but unfortunately only one of them will be able to. And I think their biggest hope is that they can park the bus and try to get something on the counter. They've got a pretty good attacking talent in this group, but... Um, yeah, overall with this team, it's not looking too great. I don't think it's really necessary to go over their whole team. I think it's too weak, and if they get through, it'll be more down to one or two players stepping up and just tactically having a good game. Uh, in goal, there's Andre Onana, who is a very promising keeper. I think he has a lot of potential, but he still makes too many mistakes for him to be somebody who I can expect to carry Cameroon onto the next round. Uh, in midfield, you've got Anguissa, who's looked very good for Napoli and is a solid defense midfielder. And then there is some good attacking talent in this group. Uh, Carl Toko Akembi has been a very good winger for Lyon recently, and they recruited uh, Brentford Zambuino as well. Uh, Vincent Abubakar has been a dangerous striker for Cameroon, and a good World Cup should seem linked to Crystal Palace yet again. Uh, then Chubo Motang is another option for a team with pretty decent attacking talent. Uh, they are without Joel Matip. Um, he probably would have helped out, but um, around 2017, he decided to focus on his club career instead of going to AFCON, and it led him getting exiled. It led to him getting exiled from the team. Like, honestly, he should just waited for Germany to call him up and then just accept a call up right before the World Cup. They would have accepted him with open arms then. But um, yeah, overall for Cameroon. I mean, I think they can make something happen. Like, they've got good defensive talent. Like, Costa Rica's gotten out of group of death in 2014. Like, I'm sure there will be, like, a major upset this tournament, but it's very unlikely, and I don't think it's necessary to talk about it every single time. Like, like sure, they could end up getting two 1-0 wins, but I don't think it's likely, and I don't think it's really worth talking about. Overall, for this group, I see Brazil winning it with relative ease with Switzerland just beating out Serbia for that last spot and Cameroon coming in last. Brazil have a very good chance to win this World Cup, and I think they'll be doing a lot of damage in the knockout rounds. And whoever gets through of Switzerland or Serbia, I think they have a chance to meet, reach the quarterfinals as well. This is a group without two really great teams, unlike a group with like a Serb or Germany and Spain in it, but man, it's might have the most overall talent in this. Even Cameroon as a team is probably one of the better fourth place teams in this group, in this World Cup. So it's going to be a very fun group to watch. Brazil especially, and then that Serbia-Switzerland game is might be one of the games of the group stage. And yeah, that's all I'll talk about right now. It's going to be really fun to watch. And yeah, see you.